Hello, my precious grandchildren and my nieces. How are you doing? I hope school's going great for you. Um, we were going to continue with Jericho today, but I realized there's a story that has to do with bravery and being courageous in between as well. Because you realize Joshua has just become the leader because Moses has, has died. And um, they have the uh, Jordan River in between them and the um, where they're going to their promised land. So <clears throat> Joshua has told the people to purify themselves for tomorrow the Lord's going to do great wonders among them so he is speaking out in faith and in the morning Joshua told the priest to lift the uh, up the ark of the covenant and lead the people across the river now we are in by the way Joshua chapter 3 verse um, I just ended at verse 6 so the ark of the covenant rep represented the presence of the Lord and the priests were carrying it across the peop across in front of the people first and that's very significant because we always want God to lead us to where we're going don't we we want Holy Spirit to be in the lead we don't want to get out ahead of where we're supposed to be that's how you get in some major trouble huh um, so the Lord told Joshua look in verse 7 Today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few step, steps into the river and stop there. So Josh, Joshua told the Israelites what to do. And he says, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today, you will know that the living God is among you. Isn't that cool? We have the only living God in the world. All of the other religions who worship false gods are dead. Even if they were great men when they were alive, they are dead. But our God is living. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, Jebusites ahead of you. Aren't those funny names? But those were all names of people that were in the promised land that um, they were going to have to um, fight. So, he says, look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And the priests will carry the Ark of the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream, and the river will stand up like a wall. Now you remember what happened at the Red Sea with Moses, right? God made a way for the people to get across the sea and Moses held out his staff and the waters parted and they walked across on dry ground. Well, he is doing the same thing for Joshua because now Joshua is leading the people and they need to understand that God has anointed him for this too. But don't you know, it was kind of, wow. But Joshua had a lot of faith. Remember, he was one of the ones that wanted to go into the promised land in the first place. He believed God. So even though he was scared, he was going to do what God said because he knew that God would come through. And he may not even been scared. He just, it, it had to be so interesting because that's not normal for a river just to divide in half, is it? It's definitely supernatural, which means it's not, possible in the natural. Only God could do it. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. That means it was flooding. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the Ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a town called Adam, which is near Zarethan. 
and the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Dry! Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Whoa! Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. And then when they got across, um, Joshua had each of the 12 men to take 12 stones and they made a, um, a pile of rocks in the middle of the Jordan to be a reminder of this time in their lives when God answered their prayers to come into the promised land and worked a miracle for them to get across the river. And I like what it says, it, look in um, chapter 4 verse 6, it says, we will use these stones to build a memorial. That means some, a way to remember something. In the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them. So it's good for us to have times when we, when we make memorials or we, we do something that will help us remember. Even if you just write it down in your journal or something on a piece of paper of all the things that God is doing so that when your children, and yes, you will have children someday too, I'm sure, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they can read it and see the great things that God did in your life. So those stones were going to serve as a memorial. So we're going to stop there today and um, just recognize that Joshua had to be brave. He had to take the leadership. He had to do what God said. And God was going to do mighty miracles through him. So now they're going to be on their way to Jericho. Okay, I hope you have an awesome day, guys. And be full of courage knowing that Jesus is is always with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. All right. Love you. Bye.